What is up guys, today I am working on my beautiful FJ80, my 80 series Land Cruiser, and I'm gonna replace my fusible link, this thing right here. And I'm gonna show you exactly the process that I took to replace it and do it safely. And I'm also gonna explain a little bit on why I'm gonna do it as preventative maintenance, as well as what you should look for if you have a bad fusible link. Let's say your Land Cruiser doesn't turn on. What are the signs of that? And I'll also uh, be sharing some tips and tricks along Along the way so let's get started let's figure out first if you have a bad fusible link so I'm gonna show you a clip of somebody who had a bad fusible link and what it sounded like you notice that when he turns his ignition his engine doesn't even crank over it's almost like he has a dead battery there's no power to the starter and this is a, a good example of a possible bad fusible link now this person did have a bad fusible link and they were able to fix it by replacing it but troubleshooting a no start issue can be a pain so before you go down a rabbit hole thinking it's possibly your starter or your alternator or even your fuel pump start with your fusible link it's the easiest thing to do and it's very affordable all right let's get to the fun stuff which is the repair this is my favorite part of making these videos is actually getting to work on my land cruiser so First thing we're gonna do is actually disconnect the negative battery terminal. And this is best practice. We always wanna disconnect the negative first. Then what we're gonna do is remove the bolt that connects the fusible link on the positive battery terminal on the positive side. So mine was super hard to remove. So I had to spray mine with PV blaster, give it a few minutes. And even then it was still hard to remove. So I had to whip out the breaker bar. Now, if yours is super hard to remove, don't be afraid to whip out the breaker bar. Just be careful. You don't wanna bend those connectors. After that, uh, we're gonna disconnect the fusible link from the junction box. So you'll see another two bolts there. Just unscrew that. And again, if it's too tight, don't be afraid to use that breaker bar or some WD-40 or PB blaster, whatever you like. And once we do that, we remove the cables and replace them. We swap them out. We tighten it back up. Uh, one key thing you wanna remember here is you wanna tighten it up nice and tight here. You don't want it loose and you wanna put them back exactly how you found them. And that's about it. It's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, and if you're afraid of mixing them, just do them one by one. That's what I did. But there's only two cables and one is larger than the other. So you'll be able to figure it out even if you forgot. And you can watch this video over many times uh, in case you <laughs> are afraid of doing it wrong. And basically, once you're done, you just screw everything back up and you're good to go. Let's go over some tips for this repair. If you're gonna replace your fusible link, might as well get an extra junction box because when you open it up, it's probably gonna break and you're gonna need to buy it anyway. So just buy it when you're buying your fusible link. I'm gonna link everything in the description below where I purchased it. And if you don't wanna purchase it there, just go to your local Toyota dealer and I'll write those part numbers in the description as well. Or you can copy them off this screen here. All right, the last thing I'm gonna mention is if you're ever in a situation where you're away from home or out in the middle of nowhere, and you identify that you have a bad fusible link, you could actually just jump the cable just to get you back on the road and get you back home. This isn't 100% recommended because you need that fusible link. It's important to be there because you want it as a point of failure, right? It's supposed to fail because it's supposed to melt in case there was ever a surge. You don't want your entire wiring harness to burn up. Use this information wisely don't uh, do it just because you don't want to buy a fusible link. You definitely do want to purchase one. But if for whatever reason you just need to get back home or you just need to get out of a sticky situation where your Land Cruiser won't start up, you could totally do it. Uh, just do it with caution. Okay, that's it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video. I do my best to do my research on these, and I know sometimes I could be incorrect. So definitely do your research, but I hope it's helpful, and I hope you learned something. Thank you.